section 8.3. So in this section, we are using with the formula that this formula is dealing with letter of T instead of Z. This is another variable that we use on chapter seven. And <clears throat> the requirement is sample has to be random samples. Either or both these conditions are satisfied. The function has to be, population has to be normally distributed or N has to be greater than 30. And this is a formula to have this test a statistic. Requirement of normality is either we should have function population is normally distributed or n greater than 30. It has to be one of these two or both. This t-test is robust against a departure from normality, meaning that text works reasonably well. Verify that there are no outliers. We might make sure that when you have the numbers, there is no outlier. And the histogram or the dot plot has a shape that is not very far from a normal distribution. Means when you plot all the numbers, you want to make sure that you see a normal distribution, not a school to the right or to the left. If the original population is not itself normally distributed, then we use the condition of n is greater than 30 for justifying use of normal distribution. But there is no exact specific minimum sample size that work for all the cases. Sample size of 15 to 30 are sufficient if the population has distribution that is not far from normal. So if the value of n is not greater than 30, is smaller than 30, if you prove that your population is normally distributed, then we could use or we could apply all the rules in these sections. <clears throat> like in this example, adult sleep, there are unrounded statistics for this sample. So we are taking 12 samples. So you already know that n is less than 30. For these 12 samples, they mean is 6.8 and the standard deviation of the sample is 1.99. A common recommendation that should sleep between seven and hours each night, use the p-value, use 0 0.05 significant level alpha is that, test the claim that the mean of mean amount of sleep is less than seven. <clears throat> the sample is symptom random sample. Second requirement is, is that the population is normally distributed or n greater than 30. The sample size is n equal to 12, which doesn't exceed 30. So now, and doesn't say anywhere in this problem that population is normally distributed. So in that case, we have to take all those points. You have to take all those points and plot, quantile plot, quantile plot that we had in previous sections, it help us to understand if all the numbers are clustered along the straight line. So in that case, it shows a normal distribution. In order to do that, we take all those numbers in the problems, all these problems, all these numbers, we input those numbers into the calculator. When you go to edit, I already put those numbers here under L1. Then you go to second Y. Second, why? You want to make sure that the first plot is on. So if it's off, you got to change it to on. And then you have to take the last graph or quantile plot, we take this one. 
calculator understand that numbers are already in L1. So everything is fine here. Now, we need to graph it. We need to graph. So you go to graph here. If it's not very clear, then you go to zoom. Always try this to see if you get a better graph. Zoom is that. So you see that points, all the points are clustered and on the straight line. So that is the sign of function population is normally distributed. So again, <clears throat> if n is less than 30, there are no outliers, and there is no statement that the graph is normally distributed, then we could use quantile plot method and notice that all the points lie on the straight line. That is indication that data are coming from normal. So this requirement must meet before we actually work on the problems. Now, <clears throat> an example one, so there was 12, so df is n minus 1 is 11, alpha was 0 0.05, and the claim was that the mean is less than 7. So that's also the claim. So what we need to do is first, we need to find the t value. So to find the t value, alpha is 0 0.05. If you want to use the table to find that, the table A3 require DF n minus one, which we already calculated here. DF is 11. Area of one tail. So here in this table, we have area of two tails and area of one tail. Our problem is one tail. And area of this tail is 0 0.05. So for area of 1 till 0 0.05 and the f of 11, you have 1.796. This is a t value if you want to use the table. And since it's on the left side, since it's on the left side, then I can actually, this is on the left side, then I can actually use <clears throat> positive here, I mean the negative here. Or you could use the calculator. Calculator would do it for you. On the calculator, you could go to the second. Verse. Now go to INVT, inverse T. Area, you put 0 0.05, DF is 11. That gives you that value, 1.796. Okay, so you have a choice of going through the table or use the calculator, which is easier to do, and give, find that number. If we ask you to find the test statistic, this is a formula for test statistic that the entire problem is discussed in this page. So in this page, the claim is mean is less than seven. So what is opposite of that? HO is equal or less. If N is greater, if N is less than 30, then the population must be normally distributed, which we already showed that in order to use the formula. We prove with quantile plot that's the case. T of a statistic is coming from this formula. Mean of population is seven. Sample mean is 6.83. A standard deviation of the sample is that. N is 12, so that would be radical. That gives us the T of a statistic. Now, when you have T of a statistic and you already have T of the graph, T of the graph show the border points. T is minus 1796, means this is a point that if you go below, you fall into the critical zone. 
but our number is, is minus 0.29. So this number does not fall into the critical zone. It falls into the good area. So in that case, we could actually accept the HO. You always reject HO if your number fall into critical area. Or you could use the p-value, which obviously from the calculator is easier to find the p-value. P-value from the calculator is 0.386, and that is greater than alpha. So calculator also shows with comparing p-value that we accept H O. Now, you could, if you want to use your calculator, you go to test, t-test, mean seven and all this information that give you the value of the calculation that give you this value so if you want if you don't want to use the formula and you want to use the calculator that's how you do it I was trying to do it, the calculator to make sure it's correct. Okay, so here you go to stat. You go to test and then t-test. You put all the numbers there, mean is seven. Me, I mean, uh, Mean of population is seven. Mean of sample is 6.83. The standard deviation of sample is 1.99. N is 12. And our graph is the left tails. So you put all the information in it. And then when you enter, it give you the T value. Minus 0.2959. And this is the value that we find through the formula. So if you do not want to use the formula or if you want to verify your answers, that's the way to use the calculator. Now, if we ask you to find the interval for the same problems, mean interval, then this table would help you to understand to find the confidence level. Let's say, for instance, in these problems, if you go to stat, test, and we get a fine T interval, mean is our, see, Calcutta understand that mean is 6.83. Sound division 1.0. Now, confidence level, we have to change it to 0 0.90. Why? Based on this table. Based on this table, if you have, if your significant level is 0 0.05 and the problem is one tail test, for confidence level, use 0 0.90. So here we have to change this to 0 0.90. That give you the interval. Mean interval is from these numbers. These are from that. So remember this table, it would determine the confidence level for this type of problems. And another problems here, in this one, all the n mean, the standard deviation of sample is given. 
use five percent significance level to test the claim that population is ninety eight point six. So original claim is H O at this time. Why? Because H O always take equal sign. In this problem, H O happened to be the original claim. What's the opposite of that? H1. These two are always opposite of each other. So if this is equal, now H1 is not equal. Again, if you want to use the formula to find T of a statistic, that's what it is. Or you could use your table, you, you could use your calculator, go to all these functions, the calculator would give you test a statistic. Also the p-value, which is e to power of negative nine means 1.4 times 10 to power of, <clears throat> uh, divided by 10 to power of nine is very, very small numbers, okay? So you see that our numbers fall into the critical zone when T of a statistic fall into the critical zone, then we have to reject HO. Rejecting HO means reject the claim and accept the alternate. Now, if you want to use your calculator to find this 1.98, make sure just in case of two tails, in case of two tails, you have to put area of one tail. See, area of each tail is 0.025. Calculator would ask for area of one tail, and then the degree of freedom, that give you these numbers, or you could use it through the table. Now, we understand that the p-value from the calculator was extremely low. See, this number, 1.4 times t to power of 10.9 is just this number, is basically zero. So p-value is zero, alpha is 0 0.05. That means p when p-value is less than alpha, we get a reject HO. So we reject the HO understanding this situation and also here. So these two should always match. And to find the interval for the mean for that problems, again, you are looking at the table. And now we have two tail tests, right? For two tail tests, when significant level is 0 0.05, use 95% or 0.95 or confidence level. For confidence level, use 0.95 when alpha is 0 0.5. Why? Because it's a two-tail test. This example, we try to use the calculator. All these numbers are given. So first, I mean, we have to input all these numbers into L1 in order to calculate, in order to calculate all these numbers. So we go to edit. I already put all the numbers in L1. I did this part already. Now I need to do this. So it's that, calculations. Uh, all the numbers in L1. So I have mean, a standard deviation, and n. Mean, a standard deviation, Sx, and 10. Now, if you want to find T of a statistic, then you go to start, test, test and it's last the symbol is less so we are using that So that gives you the T of a statistic and the p-value. You see the p-value is 0 0.09. So with those informations, then 
the T from the calculator, which is for this for this one, when alpha is 0 0.05 and df is 9, because I inverse T, I add B T, that gives us this minus 1.83. And these numbers fall in the good section. It doesn't fall into the critical area. Therefore, we accept H O and reject H1. And this is how to use the TI data force section. Now the problems, the first page are all multiple choice. Second one too. This table is already, this calculation is given. They just want you to identify what they are. Problem number four and on, if you are using the table, T table, you could use that, or you just put all the information to test. So that function help us to go through all the homework problems. Go to this T test and put all the information there. Input, you know, you put you input all these numbers into this, and that would help you to find the T of the statistic, help you to find the P value. And here, basically, we need to just find the p-value and compare that to alpha. That would tell you whether you should reject or not. You don't have to do, you don't have to draw the graph, and you don't have to find t for the graph. We do the same thing for all the problems here. See? We just need to compare the p-value. That would help us to understand whether we should reject HO or accept HO. And here it said population is normally distributed. So if n is not greater than, to see n is 10, it's less than 30, right? But problem indicate population is normally distributed. So we could use the plot now. Again, for all these problems, in this one, first they have to find, they have to input these numbers and find the sample mean, standard deviation, and n. When you have these numbers, then you could go ahead and you could go to the t test. And already, since you already input these numbers into, um, <clears throat> you edit into L1, calculator already has it, so you don't have to input it again. And then you could compare the p value. Again, this formula, if you use the calculator, is very easy to go through all of them. The same thing for these two. At the end, at the end, we just compare the p value. 